instruments and support you need for your industry. It's about the PCWI detectors and the differences between the models. As you can see, we've got a range here of detectors and a vast range of brushware that is available. We have a wet sponge unit and two high voltage units. Now, the two high voltage units are quite different to each other, but let's start with the wet sponge. This is basically the layout, a small detector with varying voltages and a sponge on an extended handle that is wet and then applied to the surface. There's a little handheld unit. The digital voltage is displayed. As you can see, there's 9 volts, 67.5 and 90 volts. This is very different. This is a low voltage tester. Very, very different to the high voltage testers. As you can see, the extendable handle stretches out beyond about 1.2 meters. You can see the brush wear, or sponge, I, should, I suppose I should say. You have round sponges. I mean, you can virtually make any sponge do anything but you need to keep in mind that the sponge must be wet for this to work so it wets the surface it is not a dry test it's a wet test somewhere between wet and damp uh, it will only find a floor which has actually got bare metal in the substrate so if you have some deep scores and scars in the paint this most certainly isn't going to find them it will work on very thin coatings once again it needs a bare spot of substrate in a pinhole or a scratch in order for it it to, to find it as a floor. So should it be used in heavy duty industrial coatings? No. I think with the advances in, in DC high voltage testing, maybe you should look there. So the two high voltage detectors, you got a pulse DC and a DC unit. DC stands for direct current. Uh, the DC unit is constant current. So the current is there, the voltage is there, it's applied all the time. When you look at the pulse compared to the DC, as you can see, the DC is a constant line, constant current that's applied to the surface. It's like having a bit of string tied both ends. Whereas the pulse detector waveform, as you can see, it's positive pulses that drop to negative. And then you can see the peak. It's not there for long. And there's probably somewhere between 26 to 30 something pulses a second. So it's critical as to how fast you move with this as to whether you're gonna skip over a floor or a small pinhole or something like that. So let's look at the DC-15. Now the DC-15 is a constant current, direct current unit you can, and the, the voltage is displayed in the digital display. That is the applied voltage that's, that's shown. So realistically it's no good having a crest meter as such built into this because if something goes wrong with the display, each crest meter is wrong as well. So there's no way of knowing. The volt, voltage and the sensitivity can be adjusted, the alarm sensitivity. You can see that's a reasonably simple operation. You've got an on and off test just to make sure that it's that it's working correctly. With that, once again, I'll go over the voltage. As you can see, the DC is a constant DC, constant current, and the pulse, you can see the pulse is up there on the pulse unit. This here shows you the direct current, the constant current flow. As you can see, it is constantly on the move. There's no brakes unless you lift the handle or the brush off the surface. Of course, then that will stop. There'll be no more current flowing. Of course, the more conductivity the coating has and the more contamination on the surface like I said it's like a piece of string that's tied both ends the more you pull on it the more voltage that you pull down superior way of testing in my belief but it does have some downfall if it comes to wet damp contaminated surfaces where a pulse would be better but for 99.9% .9 of the jobs I prefer to see DC use it on thinner coatings right down to 150 microns you know 250 microns just depends on you doing a few simple tests to make sure that you're not going to wind up burning through. With that, we move on to the pulse. It comes in a 20 and 40. It, as you can see, the coil on the handle, the voltage is produced there. You have the low voltage side, which is the black lead. You might run to about 400 volts or something like that, and then it's, it's multiplied for 100 to 1, where we've got all this voltage that's produced in the handle. This is the layout, as you can see. It's, uh, it's electronically up and down and on and off. This is the pulse, P20 and a P40, which is actually uh, 20,000 and 40,000 volts. Now let, we'll look at this pulse again here versus the DC. As you can see, like I said, the peak is not there for long. And 
that's why it's cut virtually the, it's like chopping the DC voltage it does have some negative part of it so if you're using it on a coating that builds up voltage static there is some discharging of that coating as you move through hence it works better on some coatings than a DC will especially carbonized rubber for instance you won't get a DC unit to work on carbonized rubber whereas a pulse DC unit will as you can see here the pulses are all broken up and you know it's in sections there's 28 or so uh, per second pulses so the minute you lift the probe off the surface this pulsing although it still pulses but the flow stops as I said the pulse DC contains both positive and some negative charge so charging of the surface and some discharging of the item under test so here we have the vast array of brushes I and mean, we can make brushes to suit any job specials are made to order but a lot of brushware is carried in stock. Thank you.